Korea and take us forward on this path that we have set out to travel somewhat different from other universities in the country. I have been asked to speak about where we were, where we are now and where we plan to go in future. Because fortunately or unfortunately, Anand feels that I have been associated with their department almost from the inception. Sometimes fortunately and sometimes <laughs> unfortunately. Some three or four months ago, I was given other responsibilities and we said goodbye to each other. I with a lot of sadness and he with celebration. <laughs> we, we didn't say goodbye, sir. He with celebration. But then, some reason I am back here. And uh, last I heard Anand and Meena was saying was, Oh my God, the elephant is back in the room. <laughs> So, so I am a little impatient man with the rate of progress and therefore over the years I have had the occupation to hurry them up on the path and uh, very often, now you heard him calling me AK sir but usually he calls me AK 47 sir. <laughs> <laughs> That is the reputation I have had with them. I miss uh, Amaji who is not here because she is with us in every one of our functions this year. She is not with us. Our greatest uh, gift to our university is of course Anand, whom we are very, very happy to have as a part of us. Amaji once gave me a book called the Rishi and the Rakshasa. Some of you might have read that. And on the opening page she wrote in her hand, as far as we are concerned, you are among the Rishis. And that is not here today because after she hears my talk today, she might say, give the book back, you are among the Rakshasa. <laughs> because you are never happy with what is achieved. Ten years we have had the departments of complementary medicine here, yoga therapy which was started first, yoga, just yoga, not yoga therapy actually was days. It was started I think in the early part of 2008, yes. eight, eight yes. in a small way mm -hmm. and then slowly progressed and then a few months later we also started music therapy. I was one of the unfortunate three from the university who had to go to Delhi to meet Government of India officials, an official committee set up to review the Indian universities, headed by a very, very eminent neurosurgeon called Dr. Prakash Pandit of all the institute. We have to justify the existence because deemed universities are created to be innovative, to go on a different path. <coughs> so when we went there, he asked us, what is the innovative activity you have done? And we proudly flaunted our yoga department and music department and our transgender services. Because those are the three things that we were doing here, which we thought were different. And he asked me, and because I was in charge of research, he asked me, so what? You have yoga, so what? Everybody else has got yoga. Hundreds of yoga. You have music, so what? Dozens of schools recognize music as 
the important for therapy. Show me one protocol. Show me one therapy. <coughs> Show me one research which has come out of these departments. <coughs> what we were doing till then was only to study the physiological changes brought about by yoga <coughs> and music to various physiological parameters. Heart rate, respiration, blood pressure, pulse rate, heart rate variability, ECG, so on, oxygen concentration, so on and so forth. Nothing to do with illness. And unfortunately, we did not show him even one topic. Either in yoga or in music, or for that matter, our contribution to the transgender population. As expected, we did not do very well in the committee <coughs> and we were downgraded to C category amongst the universities. That was a wake up call for us because we didn't realize how we looked in the eyes of the world. At that time, I came into the department. Before that, I was only the interaction with the government of India, having no responsibility for the department. In 2013, I was associated with the department, and then Anand joined us, and faculty in the Department of Music Therapy joined us. And we expanded to occupying much more space than what we had. Then we sat down together and to decide what is it that we have been doing which is not causing any ripples at all. I gave them only one message, you, see, you may be happy, but satisfaction and complacency is the enemy of progress. So let us try to go into an area where others have not gone. And in that planning process, we did the, the introspection. I know because we are, I have been closely associated with the department for several years. We did introspection. What way are we different from others who are practicing yoga medicine or music medicine? And we realized we have access to 1100 patients here in this campus as inpatients of a very large hospital. We have access to another 750 patients in our sister institute. So nearly 2,000 patients with various types of illnesses. Some of them whom modern medicine could help and some of them whom modern medicine could not help. And we are looking for other means of getting benefits. We had an excellent research facility. Dr. Baladeva is there, he takes it now, where you could do any test that you wanted. Much better equipped than many other <coughs> research centers in the country. And more than that, we had faculty which was not obstructed, which was interested in collaborating. In many places, Physicians in allopathy look down upon alternate systems of medicine. This is still the truth in our country. I do not know enough about how it is in the US. But a lot of people think that this is only half science. They are not willing really to embark. But we had faculty which was exceedingly interested in collaborating because they realized the limitations of modern medicine and where the Lachman Rekha exists beyond which we cannot go. So when we have these three resources, why do what everybody is doing? Outside this hall, I don't know how many of you paid attention, is a quotation from 
Where is the salam? Has anybody seen it? It says, do not follow where the path may lead. Go instead where there is no path and leave a trail yourself. That's what President Kalam said and it's there on the board just outside the hall. So we said we are now going to go on a different direction. We are not going to into the usual focus and we are going to provide targeted interventions, very specific interventions by way of complementary yoga and music to the sick and suffering. Not generally for as a physical well-being measure, not as a keep fit measure, which is what many people are doing, but as targeted interventions and generate scientific evidence in favor or against, so that once and for all this controversy about usefulness of complementary medicine will be solved. Dr. Baladeiro's center, the motto is pride. Pride, the E in pride says evidence-based alternate medicine. That is the motto also of our <coughs> research center. So why not use that and go on a different path? And we went on this different path and they have done extraordinarily well. I have nothing to complain. Over the last five years, I have just collected statistics of three months ago. Yoga therapy has completed 17 projects. There are another eight ongoing projects and believe it or not, they have 85 publications within this field. We have to acknowledge that because that is where they have taken us from where we were in front of Professor P. N. Tandem. Along with that, we also have music therapy because whenever I speak of yoga, I have to speak of music because those are my two eyes. I can't speak of only one eye because I am in charge of both. Music therapy has completed 26 projects. There are five ongoing and they have 25 publications. These are all in peer review index journals. In addition to so many books which you see outside, which have been on display, some of them also, they are very good to present it to me. So that's where we progress over the years. Thanks to Anand, thanks to Meena, thanks to Diane Nidhi and so many other staff in the Department of Yoga Therapy. <coughs> thanks also to the efforts of faculty like Mother Mohan, who was the <laughs> caught us by the hand and led us on the first few steps before he retired from the university. Then halfway through, we got caught up in a word called salutogenesis. You know, the work of the famous physician, Aaron Antonovsky, who studied the victims of the Nazi Holocaust and studied why some people survived and some people did not survive. Some people were so traumatized, some people were not so traumatized and they said, he said that there is something intrinsic in them which allows them to meet with stress and we introduced this term salutogenesis from what allopathy focuses on which is pathogenesis. So we have two paths, go on the same path or go on the salutogenesis path or go on both paths. But ours is a small part. We also have instructions from the regulatory agencies now and again, the Grants Commission, University Grants Commission, which says yoga must be an integral part of all undergraduate medical education. 
and therefore we cannot ignore that. We have to give all our undergraduates access to yoga so that they have a different perspective of medicine from what they are taught in classrooms. But if we do that, only promote wellness, only promote a good life, only promote a healthy living. That's what every department of yoga, every yoga instructor, every yoga clinic is doing all over the country and elsewhere. So, do we lose our ability to be different? We would then become part of another Me Too movement. The different type of Me Too movement, but also a Me Too movement that we are doing what everybody else does. But then, we must remember, along with that, we have to remember the path that we initially started on. Because that is what is going to fetch us recognition. That is what is going to fetch us acceptance amongst the schools and colleges. We have in this country over 800 universities. We have nearly 500 medical schools. And taking from 50 to 250 students a year, in existence for 100 years and more, admitting thousands of students. What are we? We are a small university of only four hospital colleges, only 10 years old, and only admitting about 800 students in a year to various types of courses. So we are a day within a world of Goliaths. Therefore, that has to be constantly remembered by us that when we are fighting this unequal battle, we have to be different, different so that we stand out amongst this committee of nations. In 2013, we said we are studying disease. What happened to that? Those of you who have read Alexander Pope, will remember his famous poem called An Essay of Man. And in that he wrote very, very moving words. Know then thyself. Presume not God to scan. The proper answer to mankind is study of man. So if we have to give treatment to disease, we have to study disease. We cannot do that by studying healthy people. And this awareness should come to all of us. And this way I am going to raise the bar for it and make them unhappy. Because we have to move from basic research to translational research. We have to work where it counts. And it will count when we make some difference to the sick not difference to the healthy because other people are also doing that. Look around you and see the number of unanswered questions which still lie before us. And I just noted down five minutes before I was thinking what I should say and I just noted down some of these questions which came to my mind. Can yoga therapy reduce intraocular pressure in those who have glaucoma? and move them away from drops. Very damaging. One of the common causes of blindness in our country other than cataracts. Unrecognized till the damage is already done. And the field becomes very, very small. Can yoga therapy need for the drugs in my diabetes? Can it prevent pre-hypertensives from becoming hypertensives? Can it enable diabetic patients to switch from insulin to oral hypoglycemia? At least oral hypoglycemia, which are much more comfortable to take. 
can it rid asthma and COPD patients of the tyranny of having to carry a nebulizer and an inhaler always with them? Can it eradicate this bug of the century helicobacter pylori which is responsible for so many diseases? I have spent my whole lifetime doing research on that organism and it produces so many diseases from mild gastritis to carcinoma. And in our country, we eradicate will come back because it's a thick oral transmission and environmental hygiene has to do a lot with its persistence. Drugs are costly and drugs are not very useful because resistance has developed to most of the common drugs. Can it eradicate? And I was very happy when the young lady came to me and I could push this idea into her. Study this problem and see whether you can do something for these patients. 83 it was discovered. In 2000, 20 years later, the two people who discovered that got a Nobel Prize. And it was labeled as the drug of the century, or the bug of the century. Still there with us. Can it slow down or at least prevent the onset of Alzheimer's? The whole world is now concerned with dementia of old age. And the last question which I keep asking for the last five years and I never get an answer is. We know yoga is good for some diseases. We know music therapy is good for some diseases. When used together, are they suggested? And I am trying my best to put two bulls to the cart and make them pull together. <laughs> but both the bulls refuse to go in the same direction. <laughs> and five years I have not succeeded. There is not a single joint project between between yoga therapy and music therapy, there is some antibodies between them. <laughs> so, so that that is the opportunity we have, and that is the path that we need to take, because we should not be in that humiliating position again of going to a committee and facing the same type of ridicule. Which yeah, I had three committees. I have gone to a committee of tender and then a review committee of that headed by officers of the union human resource ministry. Then one more committee of UGC to justify our existence. And everywhere we cut a sorry figure. You may well ask and Anand will ask me tomorrow will come to my room and ask, why do we not need to do all this? Don't you think we have done enough? I can keep anybody out of my room, but I cannot keep him because he is there all the time. Usain <laughs> Bolt so, is said, you know, just being good enough never changed the world. I very fond in my days before I had my own knees and not my knees. I was a trekker, a jogger, and a hiker. And I used to go around in various parts. And I used to follow the adventures of some of these very famous climbers. You must have heard of George Mallory. George Mallory died on the Everest 30 years before Hillary and Tenzin climbed it. And his body was found decades later. And they are once asked him, why do you want to do this to yourself? Why do you want to climb that? Everest. And we just answered in one line, because it's there. Because it is there. And that is my answer to Anand. We have to do this because those challenges are there. There is another very famous climber called Reinhold Messner in Austria. He was one of the few people who has climbed all the peaks higher than 8,000 meters in all the continents. And we were asked the same question. He said, the satisfaction does not lie in what you have achieved, but satisfaction lies in what you still have to do. That's why I keep doing this.
plan. Five years ago, the motto I gave them was, and you will still remember when I said, have you seen Star Trek? No. I said, in that senior Star Trek, it starts by saying, boldly go where no man has gone before. That's what I want you to do. And that's what they did. And that was the result of five years endeavor. Now I'm going to give them the latest from Standard Chartered. You must have seen it. Everybody must see it ten times daily. We are not here because we are nearly good enough. We are here because we are good. We are the best in the country and we want to be the best in the world. And that should be the principle which guides them. Because we have to be different. Circumstances dictate that we have to be different. We cannot afford to rest on what we have achieved. And we have to keep looking it for new directions to go. And I told you those 10 or 11 questions, there are dozens more which are not answered and which will make tremendous impact. I have got a drop of pressure. If I forget my drops and today morning I have forgotten because I am worried what I am going to tell, I <laughs> So, your pressure goes up. And therefore, if we find some asana which can relieve me of the tyranny of eye drops, I will be very happy. So these are questions which are there out in the world for us to answer. And I just leave you with that 500 year old message from Ambrose Pare. All of you must have heard that you see. As physicians and yoga therapy is as much part of the physicians group as any other department as far as this university is concerned. <coughs> and Pare said, our dean of faculties, our registrar, all the heads of all the institutions and centers. I'm sure that we'll make you proud and we look forward to the years in time to come when on a similar dais you say they have made me proud indeed. Thank you so much, sir.